Welcome back to All The Stars Sailing Adventures. Yeah, Rach and I were actually around on that beach yesterday afternoon and we witnessed something that was quite horrific. Quite a special moment to have been able to film from above. We watched this boat sort of approach these two turtles. But they speared one if not two of these turtles with a large handheld spear. We both found that quite confronting, but um, we had to question our own morals and that, you know, here we are on, on planet Earth ruining climate and um, overfishing and polluting and turtles are dying by the thousands. And we were both quite upset by the visuals of seeing one or two turtles being killed for human consumption. So, yeah, just a good, uh, good ethical dilemma to have to uh, wrestle with. just such a magic afternoon we have got to go for a walk quite scrubby really this bit here but more interesting is what I'm sitting in which is the remnants of a house that someone tried to build I think in the 1920s a guy was settling or attempting to settle Orpheus Island <laughs> What's this?
we happened to catch a grass emperor at Juno Bay and baked it the following night. We are tucking into this lovely banana walnut sourdough that Rach made up. It was her first attempt, yeah? Mm-hmm. Because we had some bananas going a little bit too ripe. Yep. And Jess's idea, why don't we mash them up and put them in the sourdough? Yeah. So I just mashed, just made the normal sourdough loaf, like the dough up, mashed two bananas, mixed it up in, the, in with it, some cinnamon and some walnuts. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? And just baked it as per usual. And I was expecting it to be a bit like flat and dense, but it's like... Nice and fluffy. So fluffy! <laughs> <laughs> We awoke the next day with a spring in our step and caught the high tide over to the Orpheus Island Research Station for the much anticipated creepy crawly walk. Creepy crawly. It's pretty cool. I wonder how we find the track. Do you have anything interesting to say? Oh yes, I do. Um, this is amazing. This is a really nice beach. We just had a great chat with Jim, Jim who's uh, an office island elder. Been here on and off over the years. I think he said he lived over near Ingham or something. Didn't yeah. He? Yeah, in the mainland. But he spends four weeks at a time out here and he's been working on the research station for seven years. But I think he's had a lot to do with the island for a lot longer. And he gave us some really good information, historical information about the place. And um, just the history from early 1900s to, to today, how much has changed. Which we're not going to share with our viewers. No. The name Orpheus was given to the island in 1887 by Lieutenant G.E. Richards, referring to HMS Orpheus, a Royal Navy ship which was wrecked off the coast of New Zealand in 1863. Although the island has undergone various private ownerships in the last hundred years, the island was inhabited by a, the Aboriginal people, most probably the Ngunnawigi people, for many thousands of years prior, and the island was declared a national park in 1960. It's pretty steep. We found a bush turkey mound. quite a steep walk and it's quite hot so we're both sweating quite a bit I'm really glad we had those two coffees to rehydrate <laughs> keeping us going yeah Palm Islands. Oh my god, Palm Islands have just been like, I feel like we arrived, we're here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like everything that I'd imagine that, or the best thing that I'd imagine that this could be. Yes, there's a lot of flotsam and jetsam that washes up on every beach, but. That was, that was 
three minutes. But uh, yeah, we're now going to hike across the other side of the island and get in our ding before the tide comes mm. too low. So welcome back to a slightly different version of Rachel's Botanicals. It's called Jess's Botanicals. Um, yeah, this we've seen a few of these trees and they're definitely pretty sure that they're actually, this is a juvenile arrow tree. Um, we've seen some bigger ones, but the distinctive feature of that, if you just want to come around here and have a look, is, is um, that gives it away. But you'll probably see some bigger ones further along the track as we go too. But um, yeah, I've seen a smaller one in that as well. Rachel told you we've found a mature one. Yeah, right. Look at the size of that. Yeah, so what's the distinguishing feature? The arrow. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yep. Sure, it's, it's a waddle and it's definitely an acacia in case you're wondering. <laughs> Back at base camp. <laughs> Very soft corals. Ready to go, Rach? Yes. So it's Tuesday morning, it's quarter to seven. Is that all it is? Yep. And uh, <clears throat> we've had a little bit of a rolly night with the Southwesterly picking up, making this anchorage less tenable than we'd been experiencing. We're about to head over to Hinchinbrook Island to get out of this weather that's coming. So we're over here, we're sailing across the bay. We'll get up in this creek system and tuck away in there. Main reason we're going in there is because the high tide's due in about three hours and we don't have enough time to get around the top end into Missionary Bay because <clears throat> you need a high tide for the deep keeler. So we're going to get up this creek here and then wait out the weather for a few days. We're actually doing 5.9 knots and 10 knots of breeze, head breeze. Uh, it's really six knots of pulse, pulse speed, pulse speed. There it is, six knots to the 10.5 knots. So, pretty happy with that, that big performance. She likes to point. She loves to point. 6.3 now. Time for another instalment of The Almost Naked Chef. Check the get up. 
Well, seeing as you're all high paying subscribers, I'm gonna give you some bang for your buck. Tonight's meal is hand caught mackerel, hand caught mackerel and chips mm. served on a plate. Mm. Mm. The almost naked chef. Yep, scrub those potatoes good, boy. <laughs> As I like to do when I'm Tarzan in the jungle. In a mangrove jungle, and I like to cut my chips. What kind of accent is that? You're an Indian oh Tarzan. My God. I did not realize I that Tarzan miss... was from India. I think he might have been oh, a Tamil. Oh, that is very good. He might have been a Tamil tiger. A Tamil Tarzan. <laughs> Racial appropriateness. As we have here. Mm. Yeah. The chef has gone back to uh, being a French. We have uh, the, the fish, this is the mange, the perfecto. That's a bit of macro fillet, skinned, deboned. I'm gonna just lightly crumb that or lightly flour it and um, probably cook it on a barbecue. Being the chips for the birthday girl and the naked chef. The almost naked chef, we get resourceful H because there's not much salad, so the salad is leftover lettuce, a little bit of Spanish onion, and some roast capsicums, Yum. and a little bit of vinegar mm. dressing. Let me see you get the pin folds out for me. Mm. Mm. around here in this ship. Mm. Really? Mm. Except when we run out of underpants. Really good jungle clothes, actually. Yeah, I understand why, why, yeah. Breathability yeah. is just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, no washing required. Oh. Oh. Smells amazing. Birds of Australia, hey? Yeah. Nice. Just some light, chips. light reading before light, dinner. Light reading? Yeah. And we have some tempura... Mackerel? Mackerel. Thank you. <laughs> Grand freeze. <laughs> Salad. <gasps> nice glass of Penfolds 2019 to go with that. 2000, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And some mayo. And some mayo. And some shirachra As my friend Yanni would say, bloody delicious. Holy smokes. Tune in for the next episode where we're climbing mountains and finding waterfalls.